I like this style because it's an easy way to create cute characters without building a complex 3D facial rig like when animating a 3D character. <laughs> you could use After Effects to animate the faces. But what if you don't want to leave Blender? One of my first tutorials is a 2D face rig in Blender. Using that you could easily switch between different face assets. What I like about this is that you can utilize Blender's modifier system on top of this, which can create some exciting results. Because the face assets are actual geometry instead of textures. Lately I started to ask myself, could this be set up easier? Can we somehow incorporate the new tools in Blender like geometry nodes? And the answer to that question is, yes we can. Let's see how. This geometry node setup is made up of three parts. Distributing face assets using instances. Shrink wrap the face assets on top of the head. And then making this whole setup animator friendly. All right, we have our faces into Blender. I exported them from Illustrator. So I have converted them from curves to meshes. Be sure to clean up those meshes because usually they're quite ugly. And also be sure to include some resolution because you want to project it onto the mesh and if it's just four vertices, it's not gonna project that well. So be sure to give it some resolution. So I'm just gonna create clean mouth shapes and clean eye shapes. For example, here you can see that these are not as clean. How I'm gonna fix that is I'm gonna select a loop right here and use the mean crease and crank that up to say about one. And that will basically simulate that this edge is having a support loop. I'm gonna do the same thing here for the tongue. So I'm selecting the edge loop of, uh, I'm selecting the edge loop of the tongue. And with that selected, I'm gonna use shift E to mean crease. From here on, we can now continue. We have our face and I'm gonna select that and introduce a new geometry node setup. Here we can create a new mesh line and this mesh line is gonna be going in the wrong direction. It's gonna go up uh, along the Z axis. Of course, we need it to be on the X axis. So I'm gonna choose some arbitrary numbers and start with 0.5 and minus 0.5. And as you can see, that's not entirely uh, the span of the face. So I'm gonna shrink it down and what I'm also gonna do is switch from offset to endpoints. You can reduce the count to two, and if you're happy with your uh, line width, you can continue on. I'm gonna introduce a new node, the transform geometry. This is just to place the mesh line into the scene, and the mesh line is going to be our way of distributing the instances. I'm gonna drag the collection right here um, with all the eye shapes in there. And from there, using Shift A and search for instances on points. I find that searching is always faster than looking through the menus and place that into our note flow. Uh, you can see that basically our shapes are disappearing and the line as well. The line is disappearing because the instances are overriding it and the shapes are disappearing because as you can see, uh, they are rotated and the points are rotated uh, differently and they, and because they're flat shapes, you cannot see them. So we have to rotate them on the, uh, sorry, on the X axis. So 90 degrees and now they're pointing up facing toward the camera. And for my liking, they are a bit small. So I'm gonna scale them up to around point 1.8 or maybe even two. Let's stick with two. Okay, so I just dragged a single object into my scene uh, in my note setup. I need to drag the whole collection right here. We can replace that. And what we need to do is separate the children and reset the children. With that, you can now see that our eyes are selected randomly. You can see that we have pick instance selected as well. We have that checked and that will pick the instances randomly for each index. Of course, we want to have the ability to control this. So we're gonna drag from the instance index diamond right here. And that creates a line. And when you let go of that line, it creates a new node or you can create a new node. I'm gonna use the integer and if you switch them from one to nine, because we have nine shapes, uh, you can see that they switch the eye shape. And this is in essence what we need. However, we also want to introduce some exciting new functionalities, right? We want to be able to control a lot of things. So let's go and do that. And then from our base geometry, our head geometry, we're gonna create a new node. And that new node is going to be our recast. We are going to use this raycast because we need to create a shrink wrap effect. Usually I do this shrink wrap effect in the modifier stack, but because 
uh, we're working in geometry nodes and I want to be able to utilize more functionality, say, for example, inlaying the eyes and using a mesh boolean to, say, create an eye socket for them as well. That is just something you cannot do when using the modifier because you create a uh, dependency loop. All right, bit of a tangent. And with that, we're gonna make some room, create a, a new node, the set position node, place that in between here. And with that, we can reposition our eyes. We want to be able to control this per vertex instead of the whole mesh. So what we're gonna do is connect this hit position and connect it up to the position of the set position. Now, you can see that they disappear. They're not fully gone. They're just hidden inside of the face. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say don't cost upwards or downwards because it's along the Z axis right now. I'm going to say cost a ray in the Y direction. So that's going to cost a ray backwards towards the face. And to have full access to all the vertices, we need to realize the instances. And you can see that they are now bending around the face. There's a bit of Z fighting happening there but we're gonna place them on top of the face. You can use the offset right here and, and use whatever value is working in your scene. From here, you can make, for example, an extrusion. Use the extrude mesh node and uncheck individual. Uh, as you can see for this particular face that something is going wrong. As you can see right here, they are switching around. So some of the vertices or some of the faces have flipped normals. And to make sure that that is really the case, I'm selecting one of the eye shapes and with shift G, you can say collection and this will select the whole collection. Now, under viewport overlays, we can go to face orientation. And as you can see, some are blue, some are red and the red ones are usually pointing backwards or in other words, they are flipped. So we can flip the normals in edit mode. And when you're done, you can see that now this mesh, uh, these face assets are pointing towards the camera, towards us. And that is what we want. And last but not least, what I want to do is get a shade smooth node and place it into the node tree there. So now we can switch between our face assets and they are nicely extruded from our head mesh. We can go ahead and organize it a bit more. So I'm going to select these nodes and group them into a group node. I'm going to organize those and expose the offset of the set position node. Then leave the node by hitting tap and you can maybe recolor this node. I'm using yellow just so it stands out a bit more to see what we have done. All right, so I'm gonna group a few more things. Nothing fancy, just uh, the pupil scale and the pupil rotation and the pupil position. They are grouped and framed in our node tree. With that in place, we can now start to add functionality per eye side. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. To do so, we're gonna have to create a selection. And for the selection, I'm gonna use a compare node. And then from there, we're going to use the index value. And the index is going to go from the B value of the equal node. Perfect. So when we change the A value and we change around the value of the scale, you can drag one value down to the from X to Z and then slide from left to right. And this will adjust the scale. And you can see that now one side is just scaling. And if we switch around the value, say, for example, we set it to uh, zero, then now the left side is going to be scaled instead of the right side or flipped depending on where you're looking from, I guess. Okay, so I'm searching for a Boolean uh, node. No, sorry, a Boolean math node. And place that in between here, set it to not just to flip the range around. Okay, select all of the nodes and then group them. Uh, we can bring the index down here say the A value is going to be exposed outside of the group as well. Uh, I'm going to hook up the X and the Y value as well. So they are exposed outside of the group so we can control that as well. And that is basically all that we need. Just a quick renaming on the right hand side here. Now use the Boolean right here and feed that into the selection. And you can see that this works for the rotation as well. Not these axes because they will mess with the shrink wrap, but the Z axis will actually rotate it on top of the face. I like to create these little node groups because they're easily to duplicate and keeps the node tree a little bit more decluttered, right? So I'm gonna reuse that. And if you want to reuse something and actually change it without affecting the other duplicate, you have to hit this too, and that will create a unique version of it. And after some renaming, uh, plug it into the corresponding node. 
and we can delete this node because it's included into the node group as well. The eye is now a bit funky. That is because we have masked with the uh, multiple axes of the rotation. We have to go into the group node and in the group node, uh, we have to reset the X and the Y value to zero. And now it's just only rotated on the Z axis. Of course, this would not be any fun if we could only have the two shapes be the same. We want to have variation. We want to be able to blink, for example, right? We can do that and we're going to be able to do that after this section. Duplicate the instance on points node. Also duplicate the integer node. Uh, we're going to hook them up the same way as you have done before. Uh, this is going to be set to one and this is going to be set to four. That is just for clarity to see what uh, is happening, right? Now that everything is in place, you can see that it is now working with a different eye shape. Of course, we need to plug in the integer right into the instance index and that will create the eye shape we need. So now it's eye shape four. You want to be able to switch between these and how we're going to do that is basically the same as we have done before. Uh, we're going to join them together. Uh, so these two are joined together and that creates two intertwined meshes. We don't want that. We want our selection toggle to switch between the eye sides and let's repurpose this one again. Of course, we can just go ahead and switch out the naming and, and delete some of the outputs we don't need. And basically we can use the simplest version of this selection toggle. Okay, so I'm gonna place it here right beside the one value, connect it up and then duplicate it and place it here below next to four, make that a unique version. And inside of the group, we're gonna delete the not Boolean. So this will create a flip version of the toggle. And when they are set to the same number, they will always do the exact opposite of each other. So you select one eye and the other, or maybe both. You can see that this is basically repeating the same thing over and over again uh, with slight changes. There are some eye shapes that are not working because they have to be mirrored over to be appealing. Uh, that's what we're going to do next. These V-shaped eyes are nice, but they are not looking the way I want. We need to flip them. And to flip those, we're going to use the section in between the shrink wrap and the pupil rotation. I'm going to bring this uh, geometry node a bit more uh, further along the node tree. And we're going to use a new node, or actually we're going to use a node we have seen before. It's the scale instances. So now when we flip the X value, uh, you can see that they are disappearing, but they're disappearing because they are hidden inside of the face, but they are indeed flipped. You can see that the indication or the annotation that I drew is flipped from what we saw in the wireframe. Okay, again, we're gonna reuse our good friend, this selection toggle, the node group that we have used so many times before. And this time again, make it unique. In this tree, we can delete everything that we don't need. And uh, we're just gonna be left with the bare bones of what the selection really is. And now we can select both sides of the eyes and select both of them as well, together. I'm adding a subtract node and this will give you the possibility to shift the range. So for example, if one is left and now it can be that two is left. All right, we can see that they are indeed flipped and we have to go into the shrink wrap group node. From here, we're gonna use the position and we're gonna use the normal. And what we're gonna do with those is uh, do some vector math to create a selection to align the normals of a face uniformly. In this case, you would need to know in which direction the normals should point. To do this, you would need to check the dot product of the position and the normals of the faces. If the value is greater than zero, then the face points outwards. However, this solution does not always work for every mesh. In this case, it does work because it's a flat plane. Let's use the viewport overlays to see if the face orientation is indeed flipped disable the extrude mesh and you can see that indeed the eyes are red so one of them or both of them depending on what your status is of the selection is red so now that we know that we can go back into the shrink wrap modifier we can introduce a flip faces node why we do that after the realize instances is because we have actual geometry there instead of whatever it is before that now using the result of the greater than node as a, a selection in the flip faces you can see that they are indeed flipped, but they are flipped the wrong way. So I'm gonna use less than instead of greater than, and now they are flipped outwards. Uh, and as you can see, if I've toggled the selection, they are always facing outwards. Now we can enable the extrusion again, and it's facing or extruding outwards. That is exactly what we want. 
We have built in all the functionality that we need, but it is a mess. Although we have grouped some things, we need to create a one-stop shop. We're gonna use the modifier stack to control all of our values, all of our functionality and everything we have to do from there. All right, I'm gonna use the second output right here and connect it up to the instance index. And the other one below that is gonna be the instance index of the uh, second instances on points node. These are automatically created as integer values. So now I'm gonna connect a new socket to the uh, both selection toggles right here instead of using this integer node. <laughs> and we can create different naming schemes for them in the group tab in the end menu on the right hand side. If you're doing this for yourself or maybe if you're doing this for someone else, it's always good to know what the limits are and what works best for the rig. So for example, we can set the minimum value and the maximum value. Uh, there are nine shapes, so I'm gonna use one to nine. The same thing can be set for, say example, tooltips. For example, if you hover over a panel or a field, you will get a pop-up menu that says some helpful information. For example, you can say uh, what the values mean or how to use them. All right, we have a lot of values that we can connect up. I'm not gonna go over everything here because, uh, because you're also free to connect everything up that you think is useful. Um, I'll leave that up to your own interpretation, but you will see me do a little bit here. When everything is connected up and you can control everything from outside of the geometry nodes and in the modifier stack, we can see that some values might feel a bit more unnatural. Say for example, the order of our selection toggle feels a bit weird or you want it to be different. In that case, you can introduce a math node. For example, in this case, I'm using subtract, but you can also add, multiply, whatever you want. And that way offset the range of the selection toggle. It might also feel like some sliders are a bit fast. In that case, for example, if you have a X value, you can use a math node and divide that. Uh, so for example, this value is four and I'm gonna divide this by a high number, say 10 or maybe a thousand. It depends on how your uh, scaling is and uh, actually depends on a lot of things. Uh, you can just use the same value, the four value, plug that into one of the group sockets. That way you don't have to use tremendously high numbers and you can have, say, a range from 1 to 10 and it'd be more smooth than it was before. I hope you too see this as a very versatile setup. By adding to or leaving things out of this setup, you can easily create your desired result. Experimenting with different combinations of modifiers or geometry nodes is fun to do, so I highly encourage you to try it out. For example, you can use it here. These eyes are more 3D looking. You don't want to use the shrink wrap method here because you will project the mesh flat on top of the face and you will of course lose the 3D appearance. Don't just limit yourself to what you have seen in this video. It is also possible to create something unique and of your own. And when you do, please be sure to let me know on Instagram and or Discord. Links are in the description. As always, stay creative. I'll see you next time. Ciao.